All right, how's everybody doing? I'm back, uh, working on a couple of different videos, a bit of a series, I guess you could call it, going over the the fundamentals of Smash. You'll hear the word fundamentals thrown around with uh, with players. Like certain players will say, "Oh, that guy has really good fundamentals," or "Hey, this character really rewards good fundamentals," things like that. And what they're referring to is like the basics of Smash. It's the it's the 101, the, the the concepts that are basically vital to know if you want to play at the very best that you can. And we're going to be going over them today. We're going to be tackling um, a couple of them in different videos. Uh, in this video in particular, we're going to be talking about spacing. I wanted to do spacing first because I feel like it's a, a vital concept that is hard to understand without outside help. Like, it's actually, it's hard to tell what exactly is going on unless you have someone tell you what it is. So, with that being said, what is spacing? Uh, to put it as simply as possible, it's using every every inch of range you have on your aerial or your grounded move or your, you know, whatever attack, even like certain grabs. It, spacing is using the max amount of range that you have in order to maintain safety. So let's take Ike's Nair, for example. I'm sure we're all familiar with the Ike Nair. We've all been hit by the Ike Nair. We've probably all landed the Ike Nair a couple times. We know what it does. We know what it's here for. The Ike Nair is the combo starter. And it's notable because it's a combo starter regardless of positioning. If I do this Nair right here, I can get this back air. Point blank Nair leads into back air. Simple as that. That's just a standard, like, bread and butter. That's what Ike does when he lands an air at that percent. That's, like, a nice two-piece that's just good for damage. However, something notable about Ike's Nair is that you don't have to be point-blank to get that max damage follow-up. Here, we see a bit of a, a tipper Ike Nair leading into the same follow-up doing the same amount of damage from this range. Now, you know, it's pretty easy to look at this and be like, okay, well, yeah, it's just you're just doing it from farther away. What does that actually matter? Well, let's see what happens when this Nair gets blocked, for example. Let's say we're in a position where we don't know if this Nair is going to hit. Maybe Fox, like, whiffed a dash attack or something, and the dash attack just ended, but we want to punish with something. Let's punish with a Nair, just coming up from all the way up here. That's a forward air. Give me a moment. Let's just do a Nair right here. Have Fox get to hold and shield. Ike hits the Nair on block. Fox is going to buffer and up smash out of shield. Boom. It's punish. That's a stock. On Battlefield, on Final Destination, Ike has lost that stock, potentially lost that game, potentially lost that set. Now let's see what happens when we space that Nair. Let's see what happens when we use every amount of range on that Nair that we can, and Fox blocks it. So let's do short hop here. Press the Nair button. Fox gets to shielding. Ike's gonna swing the big old sword, hits the shield. Again, it's like, this isn't even the most perfect Nair you could possibly do, but let's see what happens when Fox tries to up smash out of shield here. A punish that worked before does not work here because we are further away. Simple as that. It's not an increase in frame advantage, it's just distance. Of course, if Fox whiffs an up smash, that's also very reactable and pretty laggy and, you know, the 45% is Fox, that's one Nair back air into like offstage edge guard positioning, getting the down air, that's a potential game, that's a that's a potential stock into a potential game, into a potential set. These single interactions make enormous differences. Your positioning matters. Always it matters. Even if you feel like it doesn't, a lot of times it kind of does. It, it makes an enormous difference, and generally speaking, there's no reason to not. However, that's not the only reason why we space, and that's not the only way we can space. So let's say I'm up here, I'm point blank with Ike. Fox does something that's like maybe a little scary or whatever, and we kind of just want to get out of the position. We're not, we're not really in a position to punish. We don't want to go for like an up smash out of shield or anything, or like a forward air, like instant jump forward air, because that's probably not going to be the safest call. So we're like, why don't we just do drift back nair? Short hop, drift back nair. Well, the reason why we do drift back Nair is because the distance that we have here, let's just remember this spot that Ike is at, compared to this spot right here, which is like 
two squares closer to where Fox is, this is an enormous difference because if Fox actually blocks this Nair, again, he gets that up smash. If Fox blocks this Nair, he doesn't. Simple as that. And that's a game changer, as we saw before. So that's another that's another way you can space through through your mobility. Not necessarily just because of the range, but like if you are close to the opponent, drift back aerials will do the same thing. That's how characters like Mario can effectively space their moves. Mario and, and Fox and other characters with traditionally stubby normals can place their moves in ways that are considered to be spaced because you're using the range of them because the character's mobility is good enough that that can happen. So on and so forth, you get the idea. But why else do we space? Like what, the, I get the idea that, you know, it makes you safer and when it hits, it's good. And when it doesn't hit, it's not really that big of a deal. But what does it actually do outside of that? Um, in all honesty, one of the main things that spacing does to opponents is it, it frustrates people. When you have an aerial that is as safe as Ike's Nair and you can kind of just do it on people's block and they have to contend with what is basically a mix up scenario, that frustrates people. People don't like being put in positions where the right answer isn't obvious in any fighting game. That's just how life is. You do a Nair up, up front like this, like throughout an entire set, that dude is gonna walk away from that set with not only the W, but with the belief that Ike is trash. That's just what he's gonna think. Oh, Ike Nair isn't that good. You just up smash out of shield. Well, no, because if the Ike is positioning his Nair correctly, the Ike might, the Ike is almost definitely like going to do a lot better, potentially win that set. And then also the opponent is gonna walk away being like, wow, Ike's so dumb, he can just Nair on my block because the opponent's probably not playing the mix-up game properly. And that's what it is at the end of the day. It's a mix-up. When Fox blocks this aerial, Fox is slightly plus. Not plus enough to drop shield and get a dash attack, for example, but he's plus enough that Ike can't pressure him afterwards. And that's where the balancing act of sword normals on block begin. Does does Fox choose to maybe hold shield after this nair? If you hold shield, I can go in for a grab, try to keep the pressure going. You can go in for a grab, maybe even go for a second nair, keep, again, the pressure going. Let's say uh, Fox decides to actually go for a punish, where maybe he doesn't have one. Well, I, if he's holding shield and Fox dash attacks, that's a blocked dash attack, and a blocked Fox dash attack is like at least a free grab in, in even the worst case of scenarios. But alternatively, if you jump away, you can do a falling there and get a punish through that because, you know, if dash attack, if you roll back, it resets to neutral and you get a bunch of distance, you spot dodge, spot dodge cancel into like, I don't know, something stupid because if spot dodge cancel, you can go into up tilt. Things like that. Even you could just hold shield afterward and, you know, it makes the punish window a lot smaller too. There's, there's options outside of just get hit or just wait for them to make the decision that's the correct one because there's really no one correct answer in that position. So I, I believe that's what we in the business like to call a mix up. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the other reason is because it, it, it frustrates the opponent. It makes them go for things that they don't necessarily have and it forces the opponent to guess in positions where they probably don't want to. When people are blocking, the last thing they want to do is feel like they're unsafe, you know? And that's something Ike's Nair can actually do pretty effectively. Um, now, you, you, you hear all these things that I've mentioned about spacing. This, this whole concept of placing your aerials well and making sure that you're in a position where the opponent can't effectively punish you, but you can effectively get your max damage combo like that sort of spacing is good. H how do we go about doing it? Well, one thing you'll see with a lot of like, admittedly, like, let's be honest here, not not great Ike players or sword character players in general, is they'll just do this. They will just, for lack of a better term, they will just mash Nair. They're mashing the Nair button, they're mashing the A button. They just got their button all over the screen because they don't have a button on the screen at the time that, you know, the button ends. They're like, well, there's no Nair, better put a Nair, better put another one, so on and so forth. I'm spacing, I'm controlling a zone. You are not doing that. That is not what this is. This is not spacing. This is deliberately giving yourself like a an amount of lag that is just not conducive to a successful experience. Like, unless you're just doing it in place every time, in which case Fox can easily punish that 
if he wants to. He doesn't even need to want to punish that. He could just sit back and shoot lasers if he had, if he really felt like it. There's a variety of options to deal with this because it's literally just bad. It's just not a good decision. The appeal of spacing is the fact that you don't have to make one given choice every single time. It's the fact that you can force the opponent to try to guess what you do afterwards. And of course, oh, excuse me. Of course, a, a option after that falling nair is another falling nair. That is one of a variety of different things you could do afterwards, but it's not the only thing. It's not the only thing you should be doing. To go along with that, and this is just a, an uh, important note that should go with just about every fundamental like video that I'm going to make. Every button that you press, every attack that you put on the screen should have some kind of reason for existing. You should not put an Ike Nair on the screen just because there isn't an Ike Nair on the screen. You don't just land with aerials for the sake of landing with aerials. That doesn't make any sense. You can land with aerials because it gives you less lag and maybe you're A, can or a landing with it and you're giving yourself no lag. And that's, that's good. That's a reason why you would do that button there. You, you did it because it reduces the amount of lag you have. This is not doing anything. It's plain and simple. This, this Nair right here, this is not literally doing nothing. So much so that I accidentally drifted off the stage. Not only is this not hitting anything, but Fox is not pressured to go anywhere near you. He doesn't feel the need to have to deal with it in the slightest. There's no reason to be whiffing Nair's there, so don't. Just play Smash Brothers. Just keep it simple. Put your Nair on the screen when you feel like you need one. When you feel like Fox is about to run in, then you can do retreating Nair. Oh, Fox got hit by it. Let's get my max damage follow-up. Go for a back air afterwards. Things like that. You have safe options. Safe options don't mean only do the one quote-unquote safe option because that's the best way to make it unsafe, is to make it predictable. So yeah, uh, let's just summarize, I guess. That's basically everything. Why do we space? We space because the risk reward is literally just, it's compared to this snare, the risk reward is actually just a direct upgrade. The, the risk is significantly less. The reward is literally identical. You get the same amount for way less of a, of a potential loss. We space because it makes the opponent feel like they have to start quote unquote playing the game um, you will meet people that are just patient enough to be like, yeah, I'll just weather the storm, wait for you to do your Ike Nairs on block. And that is, those are the kinds of people that you can pressure for free and they're going to be like, wow, Ultimate's a super mashy game. But we, we space because the risk reward is important. It's an it's an important factor. We space because it can function as literally a whole game plan. You can build your entire game around doing an Ike Nair on someone's block and just getting very good at the mix-up that happens when you do an Ike Nair on someone's block. And then, of course, um, afterwards, we, we space because we want to, again, cover, like, after we talked about it before, it's cover, sometimes it's just to cover an area. If you're jumping back and jump back Nairing with, with um, Ike, it's because you have this space behind you that you want to put a hitbox out while you're retreating. That's fair. Fox is a character that will chase you down. If he chases you down into that nair, he's getting hit. And that's, you know, doing the, the job of the aerial. So the general takeaways, again, space your moves. You have no reason not to. I don't care what character you are. I don't even care if it's Roy. I, I know you Roy players are going to be like, well, my character doesn't space. No, your character spaces. You just don't know how yet. You have to space right. You have to space your sweet spots. You have to space your middle hitboxes. Sometimes you even want to space your sour spots. You have to space as much as the next guy. It's just the reality of it. The, like every character needs to use spacing at the end of the day. It, this is a vital skill. Even if you, even if you feel like your character does not space any aerials or anything, even like you play Little Mac, for example. Little Mac is obviously a character that is not gonna take full advantage of this concept, but even that's not true. A Mac down tilt on block, if it's spaced, it's very, very good. Like, that's a difference maker. A point blank Mac down tilt really isn't that safe. A spaced one is. There is no character in this game that doesn't use spacing, and that is why this is one of the most important fundamentals in the game. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, 
Thank y'all for watching. I know usually my videos tend to go above 80 bajillion minutes. This tends to be the, the general time frame. So, you know, thank y'all for, stick for sticking around in this, like, standard 15-minute one. Um, yeah, I, if you have any requests for other uh, Fundamentals videos that you want me to make, um, if I haven't already made them, I'll go over them as well. There's a, there's a couple of these that are coming out. They're all, like, sort of going over general concepts. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.